Hi, I'm Mike, Pokétips Mike, and if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know I love glitches. For me, it's always so fun to go through Pokémon games and just do weird stuff and see stuff that's not normally supposed to happen. Pokémon Sword and Pokémon Shield came out about a week ago now, and when you have 6 million people playing your game in the first week, they're gonna find some pretty interesting bugs. Except you, you didn't make it to Galar, buddy. So today, we're gonna take a look at some glitches in Pokémon Sword and Pokémon Shield. And what better way to start things off than with a glitch I found myself in the wild area. So I found this glitch a few days ago when I was just messing around in the wild area collecting berries from berry trees. So normally, like most solid objects, you can't go through trees. If you run into a tree, you're just gonna hear a nice little thud and kinda hurt your character's head. Poor little guy. However, if you're riding your bike, and only if you're riding your bike, and you start interacting with the berry tree, where it says it's a berry tree, do you want to shake it, you go ahead and do yes. Your bike disappears for a moment, and you start to shake the tree. So we're gonna get greedy, and we're gonna shake this tree until a Pokémon comes down. We have six berries on the ground right now. Wow, and now we have nine berries on the ground. We're doing pretty well. And now we're at 11 berries. Usually I don't get this far. Let's shake it some more. And now we're at 13 berries! Come on, I actually want a Pokémon to fall down from this tree. Oh my god, this might be like a record for berries from a tree! There we go! Alright, so a Pokémon will eventually come down from the tree when you get too greedy. Again, I can't believe I got that many berries out of the tree. I wish that would happen when I'm not trying to do this. Anyway, you could fight it, you could beat it in a battle, or you could just run away. To save time, I'm just gonna run away. Then, once you get out of the battle, you'll actually collect the berries, and you'll be able to walk through the tree. See this right now? I am going right through the tree. Look at my character. Look at my head. I am inside of a berry tree right now. <laughs> now, while you're in this state, you can't get off your bike for some reason, but in the wild area, I have a lot of fun with this because you could zoom into your character, you could zoom out, you could look at all different angles, and that looks kind of funny. I don't know how my character physically is able to do that, but somehow, some way, we got ourselves into this tree. And just as easily as you can walk into that tree, you can walk out of the tree with absolutely no issues at all. And you can try this glitch for yourself, it's extremely easy to do. I haven't seen anybody else posting about it online, but I'm sure somebody else has found this as well because it's so simple to do. I found that just because I was holding up on my controller and I was kind of shocked to see myself go through the tree. Now for some reason, this glitch does not work if you're not on your bike. So here, let's go do another berry tree over here, just so I show you that it doesn't work. And again, I'm getting crazy lucky with the berries here. 13 berries before I encounter a Pokémon. Again, this never happens to me. I guess I'm having recording luck. And then let's run away from this thing once again. Bye-bye, big squirrel. And then, once we get out of the battle, we'll collect our berries. And I'll try holding forward, and I can't walk through the tree. The tree is solid like it should be. Now, you could actually do this glitch anywhere in the game. It doesn't just have to be in the wild area. I just prefer doing it in the wild area because you can move the camera around and see the crazy angles. But here you can see I'm doing it on Route 3. I'm running away from this Squovet right here, and I'll be able to walk into the tree with absolutely no problem at all. Now, I'm not a developer or a programmer, but I'm assuming what's happening here is because the game makes your bike disappear before you interact with the tree, and then it reappears after the whole battle's over, if you look very closely, the front tire of your bike reappears in the tree. So maybe since your bike tire is there, the game thinks you're supposed to be able to walk through this object and lets you go ahead and walk right through it. Again, that's just what I think, I have no idea. Alright, so that's enough about the tree bike glitch. Next up, we have another glitch with the bike. Seems like when you put a Rotom on a bike, you get all kinds of problems. Now this glitch I know has happened to a lot of people. A YouTuber named Electric Alex, another YouTuber named Adam Rose, and a lot of people on Reddit. Basically, what's going on here is these players are starting the game and playing through the storyline like normal. Then, when they get to Route 2, right by Professor Magnolia's house, as they're crossing over the little bridge to get to her house, something kind of weird happens. As they're running over the bridge, either to or from her house, the bike just appears out of nowhere. The weird thing here being that at this point in the game, you don't have the bike yet. You get the bike after defeating your first gym leader, and at this point, you barely just even got your first Pokémon. And this also isn't the only place that this glitch has happened. Another YouTuber by the name of La Li Lu Lei Lul Lul? 
I'm so sorry. Well, they uploaded a video themselves in the town with the first gym, Turf Field. As they moved their character to run over by the water, for some reason, once again, the bike just appeared out of nowhere. And again, just like the first example, this player did not have the bike item yet at all. Now this one, I'm pretty sure I know what's happening here. Again, if you look very closely when the bike first appears, it first appears in the water mode. And if you notice, the commonality between the locations of this glitch is it happens when you're near water. So what I think is going on is the game thinks for a split second that you're actually on the water instead of land. And if you're able to walk on the water, the game thinks you must have the Rotom bike and have it upgraded so it can surf on water. But since these players aren't on water, the bike quickly then turns into the land bike, which they can ride around wherever they want until a cutscene or entering a building makes it go away. I kind of experienced something similar when I did my video, What Happens When You Leave Town Without a Starter Pokemon, when I was just running around and my character ended up running on water, the water bike appeared even though I didn't even have a single Pokemon, a single badge, or anything. Now I tried my best to go ahead and recreate this glitch, and I spent a good hour running on the bridge trying to get this to happen, but I couldn't get it to work for me. So there must be some really low chance or odd way that you have to walk for it to happen. I couldn't get it to happen myself, but maybe somebody will figure out a consistent way to make it happen, and it could potentially be useful when people are trying to speedrun the game, getting the bike a little early and traveling a little faster. Now moving away from bike glitches, this next one is another one that's extremely easy to do. However, it does contain spoilers for the story of Pokemon Sword and Shield, so if you don't want to get spoiled, skip to the time on the screen right now. Alright, with that being said, we're jumping right into spoilers. So during the end of the main storyline, after you battle and capture Eternatus, and before you fight the champion Leon, if you go home and talk to your mom before battling Leon, for some reason she already seems to think that you've won and you're already the champion. So here's this glitch in action. We're in-game and I just captured Eternatus and we're leaving the hotel. The people out here say, at last, the final match, challenge your Poketips so you can tell that everybody's ready to see me fight the champion. But instead of going and directly fighting the champion, we're gonna go all the way home to Postwick. And when we go in our house and tell our mom, hey, we just captured a legendary, we're gonna go fight Leon, she says, I suppose there must be many demands on you, love, now that you're champion. But remember, the important thing is that you be the kind of champion you want to be. And if we fly over to the Pokemon League again, you can see there's a bunch of people waiting outside for us, ready for that final battle, but my mom thinks it already happened. So it's nice of her to be optimistic, but I didn't even battle him yet. What if I lose? Now for our next glitch, we're moving away from the bikes, and we're going to be talking about the wild area. This one is the Max Raid Battle glitch. Now this one is the most well known, because there are so many broken things about it, and so many benefits you could get from doing it. You could use this glitch to easily find rare Gigantamax Pokemon, you could use this glitch to make lots of money easily, you could use this to get insane amounts of watts in the wild area, and you could also use it to EV train your Pokemon extremely fast. And we've only known about this glitch for a few days now, I'm sure if it doesn't get patched there are going to be even more broken things coming out of it. Now in this video I'm not going to go over all the crazy things you could do with this glitch, however I will show you the most basic thing you could do with this glitch, get a whole bunch of watts really really quickly. So we're here in the wild area, in the bridge field area right by the daycare. Now before we start this we're going to make sure we have a wishing piece, I already have six in my bag so we're good to go. Now with the wishing pieces in my bag, I'm going to ride my bike over to this Max Raid Den spot over here, and I guess I'll get 200 watts, we're going to get a lot more than that in just a moment. So, we're going to throw the wishing piece into the den, and it's going to make us save the game. And now the wishing piece is in the den, and we're going to go ahead and interact with it, and we see a nice 5 star raid battle Pokemon in there. However, we're not going to go ahead and fight it, instead we're going to select Invite Others, and then the game is going to try to start searching for other players to invite into this raid battle. Now while it's doing that, we're going to hit the home button and actually go to the home screen of our Switch and then come down to system settings over here. Then in system settings, we're going to go all the way down to system and then go to date and time. And we're going to go to date and time again and change the date one day forward. 
Now, normally in Pokemon Sword and Shield, when you change the date for your game, it locks you out of time-based events. However, when we do it this way by having the raid battle open, if we quit out right now, the game actually thinks that a full day passed. And now we can interact with this den again, it's gonna say there's energy pouring out, and boom, we're gonna get 2,000 more watts just like that. Now we're gonna do this again, invite others, it's gonna try searching for other players, we're gonna jump back to the home screen, we'll go down to system settings, we'll open up system, we'll go to date and time, and then we'll go to date and time again, change it to the next day, hit OK, and then make our way back to the game. Quit out. And interact with the den one more time, and boom, 2,000 more watts, just like that. Again, getting all these watts is really just scratching the surface with this glitch. There's so many more cool things you could do with it, and at that point, getting all those watts is just kind of like a nice little bonus. If you want to see how you could use this glitch to EV train your Pokemon super fast, I'll be linking my guide to it in the description. And with those four glitches down, I think we're at a good point to wrap up this video. Now, obviously, there are more than just these four glitches in Sword and Shield, but at the time that I recorded this video, these are the four that I found the most interesting. If you know about any other glitches in Pokemon Sword and Shield, let me know about them in the comments section, because I love reading about all this weird stuff. As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you're new. And if you want even more Poketips, follow me on Instagram at PokeTipsMike. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.